I was curious to know yes, what sir. business that was. <laughs> I imagine it was probably actually, Lemonade or something like that. But I'm just curious no, what actually, that was. was and what it, okay. Go ahead, Timothy. Yeah, actually, it was a little bit bigger than that. I actually started with a uh, community cleaning company. So it's crazy because every the businesses I started as a kid, first one at eight, second one at 10, third one at 12, I started the exact same businesses as a young adult. So right, my first business at eight, it was a uh, community cleanup company. We was in uh, Fort Sill, Oklahoma. My stepdad, he was um, in the Army. So we would basically help Army families um, pretty much move in, move out, clean their house, clean their yard, the trash cans. And so my first two employees was my older sister, who's a year older than me, and then my best friend, Tito. <laughs> so you 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 uh, used your friends in terms of being resources at an early age. Now the other thing I was really Absolutely. curious about is, um, and I'm curious to know what advice you give to young business people. But you went into the restaurant business, and I've had friends that are restaurant owners. Uh, Joyan Bolden, who's the owner of BU, I consider him a good friend as the as as well as the owner of uh, Blue Note, which is a uh, blue stuff here in the area, and there's others as well. But I do know for a fact that restaurant owning is not for the meek at heart, and you did that at <laughs> 20. So I, I was wondering what, what led you to think that you wanted to open a restaurant business in the first place and definitely at the age of 20? Okay. Now, it was sure optimism because I'm the worst cook ever, and I can't cook even to this day even though I've owned two restaurants. So I was just more just optimistic and ambitious. Uh, I saw an uh, opportunity in the Carolina trailer, actually a classified newspaper, and uh, it was a restaurant for rent. We went in. Uh, my partner and I, he's probably like five years older than me. Uh, we renovated it. And um, so my first restaurant was a deli and dessert bar. Uh, it was in West Columbia, a little bit outside of the University of South Carolina. So I actually was a full-time student at the University of South Carolina at the time a full-time employee at uh, Parisians doing loss prevention, and I also was the youngest officer candidate uh, for Army OCS. Uh, so, yeah, I absolutely have zero skills, zero passion in cooking, all optimism, but we did uh, win the – we had a two-way tie for the Golden Spatula. We had a DHEC score of 97. Wow. So y'all did well, even yeah. though that, I'm, I'm sure that you at least <laughs> – Realized your weaknesses and hired people that were good cooks <laughs> when you realized that you could not cook. Yeah, well, you know, I kind of put the sandwiches together. Uh, you know, I did a lot of the cooking, uh, but we did. It was kind of like, uh, well, with my partner, it was like a family business because he hired his brother, sister, first cousin. Like, we had a lot of uh, family members. Now, my second restaurant I had at 25 that was in Greenwood, South Carolina. And uh, it was a wing restaurant. Now, I was a little bit uh, passionate about that just because I love wings. However, uh, you know, I had, you know, deep fryers and the equipment to assist me. So, you know, that was still, I was still wouldn't consider myself a cook. Still not consider yourself a cook whatsoever. Now, what advice do you give <laughs> to people that are into trying to be entrepreneurs? And then I want to bring Charlie back into the conversation because, I mean, you were a young politician, Charlie, so I'm kind of curious to see what advice you would give to people if they want to get into politics. So both of y'all are – relatively young you're not probably as young as Timothy but you're still relatively young compared to my 57 which I just hit today but uh, uh what advice would y'all happy give birthday. to people wow. thank you what advice would y'all give to people that are trying to uh break into either business or politics okay well I would say uh, as far as aspiring entrepreneurs I would say don't aspire like Nike said just do it so I would say start before you're ready uh, the two books that I highly recommend would be Think and Grow Rich and Rich Dad Poor Dad, the two books that have created more millionaires and billionaires than any other book. They helped me in my transition from employee to self-employed, from self-employed to business owner and then investor. So I would, I would say that. And what about you, Charlie? What, if somebody wanted to get involved in politics, like I said, there's some younger people, even younger than yourself, that are now in our city council. So what advice would you give to people if they wanted to get involved in politics? Yes, yeah, for me, politics has always been about issues and not necessarily um, you know, political parties or running or campaigns. So I think one of the things I, I always tell people is find an issue that you're passionate about. Find the people and organizations in your community that are doing work in that area and go help them. Like get involved in the work itself. And if you do that, if you find the thing that you're passionate about, um, I think opportunities to be involved in politics will come along. Uh, and you have to be hungry for it. You have to be aggressive for it. And you have to 
but I think but I think the best public servants uh, don't come at it from a tactical you know this is this is the right time or the wrong time to run for office. I think they come at it with a real passion for doing the work. You know, my example in 2015, I had two little girls who were seven and three years old. It was exactly the wrong time for me to run for city council, uh, but the opportunity presented itself. I had a real passion for helping people and making a difference in our community, and uh, so far things are working out. Definitely. And uh, Timothy, would you uh, would you make that same argument that you have to have a passion? For what you're going into, because I do sometimes find that people go into entrepreneurship yeah. and don't really have a passion for what they're trying to do. I think you have to have a okay. passion for whatever your entrepreneurship business is. But it seems to me that sometimes people just like the concept of being an entrepreneur, not necessarily realizing the hard work that goes into that. Well, I, I would say it like this. Um, I was originally going to school to be a lawyer and a sports agent. My dad is actually a district circuit judge in Asheville. So my track was a little different. Entrepreneurship, I feel, was in my DNA. However, 12 of the businesses up until now that I started were all profit-based. Like, I didn't even – some of the industries I didn't know anything about. Like I said, the restaurants, I couldn't cook. So I think it's a myth to say that you have to be passionate to profit in a business. Now, I I would say, yes, it will be easier if you're passionate because, you know, the long hours – that you put into to as far as you know getting your startup off the ground, uh, just you know the things that you the challenges you you face as an entrepreneur. So just say twelve businesses in all profit based, no passion. Now I'm in my passion based businesses, which are business coaching, helping other people, and then my youth entrepreneurship academy. Yes, gotcha. and what are some of the things that you teach people in the uh, in the academy and with your uh, the different things that you're doing in terms of education. And by the way, you'll be glad okay. to know that Charlie, in addition to being a city council person, is a uh, lawyer and has been a lawyer here in this area for, how long have you been a lawyer, Charlie? I'm guessing you're in the area for, what, 10 years maybe? Um, let's see, what year is it, 2019? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, almost 20 years now. Almost 20 years. Almost 20 years? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good. Now, like I said, I, I kind of – you know, chose my senior year at the University of South Carolina, I chose the entrepreneur route. So I actually dropped out of school with three classes to graduate, Spanish, political science, and an elective, uh, because I was so passionate about entrepreneurship and I didn't want to have a plan B, because like Will Smith said, it'll distract from your plan A. Um, But just say some of the things I teach in my youth entrepreneurship academy, we teach entrepreneurship, of course, where we actually teach them everything from how to create a vision board, how to write a business plan. Uh, We teach them about legal structures. Uh, We actually help them launch a business, and then we have a personal development course, a leadership course, and a financial literacy course. And the website for that is just uh, juniorceoacademy.com. Like I launched it last year in May, and from May to this year, I expanded it into 11 states. And uh, we have 13 independent academy owners in 11 states and then one in Ghana, Africa. Uh, through my business coaching agency, we teach, you know, I basically coach, you know, everything from authors, coaches, consultants, small business owners. And I help them with everything from, you know, their business plan to monetizing their, their gift, their talent, their skills, or their look. Yeah, because one of the things that I've always been shocked by, and I'm sure, Charlie, you probably would agree with this as well as a lawyer, is I'm often shocked at how many businesses don't have any sort of vision board or business plan or even have any sort of legal team with them and everything. Because, uh, like, when you talk to them and you ask them about that, oftentimes they're sitting there going, like, I'm supposed to have one of those? When that seems to be the most logical first step. Yeah, I would say most people actually get stuck in the self-employment box, meaning they're the HR department, operations manager, CFO, CEO. They're doing the work. Uh, and just read it, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the cash flow quadrant part. I was able to understand and implement the difference between being self-employed and a business owner, which if you just flip the word self-employed, it just means employ itself, meaning no employees, no subcontractors no uh, strategic partners. Uh, Business owners create systems. So once I learned the difference between the two, then I basically went from, to say at the time I learned that I had an LLC with three DBAs, which is just doing business as. So I had a 26 employee uh, 
uh, cleaning company, two-man tire shop, two-person digital marketing company. And then once I stopped trying to do all the work and started outsourcing, I pretty much went from making 9000 a month to over 40000 a month and just, you know, creating more streams of income. Because one of the things I'm curious about, Timothy, is do you find that a lot of times people try to do too much when they're being an entrepreneur? Because I know a lot of times people will, one, they'll either get caught up in multi-level marketing plans and try to have their own business, or they'll try to maintain, <laughs> like, a nine-to-five and also maintain some sort of business. And it seems to me that that's really hard to do. I'm, I've tried to do it a couple of times, and I know that it can be very difficult trying to maintain a variety of businesses. I mean, you've done it multiple businesses at a time, but particularly if you've got to report to somebody, like if you've got an employee. And it yeah, seems to me that a lot of right. people, because of the fact that they don't want to leap out there and risk, run the risk of failing and run the risk of being dirt poor, they try to maintain a nine-to-five job in order to maintain li- livelihood. But then at the same time, that can create a problem in terms of the time that it takes for your business. So I was just wondering how you coped with that when you were working and also running businesses and what kind of advice you give to people in terms of whether they can maintain a nine-to-five and also an entrepreneurship business. Gotcha. All right, so just say between age 19 and now I'm 38, I've fired my boss three times. So just say I I actually have an academy called Fire Your Boss Man Academy uh, on the domain fireyourbossman.com. Uh, So just say I actually teach people and help them with the transition going from full-time employee side business to full-time self-employed and then from self-employed to business owner, and it can be really challenging. Uh, So how I tell people is, all right, if you look at um, a full-time job, is 40 hours a week. Part-time is 27 or less. So if you're not giving your business at least part-time hours, which is 27 hours a week, working seven days a week, you know, you can do four hours a day. All right, if you're not giving your business at least 27 hours, then what you have is a hobby. So it's going to be harder for you to manifest the results that you want to uh, manifest because all of your energy is either at your job or between your job, your family, and then what's left goes into your business. So I try to get people to think more strategically, like whether it's contribute 10 to 15% to your 401k, in which I did, and then just say create a, a safety nest. Uh, you know, to cover your bills, at least to give your business time, you know, three to six months to prosper if you decide to fire your boss. Um, so, I, you know, I just kind of get people to think more strategically and work their self off the job. But you have to give, you know, your business more energy in order for it to grow and prosper. So it, it's a challenge. And, yeah, if you're working 8, 10, 12 hours at your job, you're going to have to get off and put at least four hours into your business. So once you get it set up, of course, you want to focus on sales, marketing, advertising, and promotion to speed up the process. And then the trick is once your business income matches your job income, then guess what? You have the option to go full time. And then, of course, if you created a nest egg, then that will give you a little more comfort to go ahead and jump off the cliff. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I I think we've only got about another minute or two to go. So before I get off, I definitely want to hear one more time from you, Charlie, in terms of advice and and everything. But uh, what I really need from you, Charlie, is the website for folks that might be interested in helping the campaign that might be listening from Durham. And I'm sure we don't mind taking money from outside of Durham if there are people that are listening from outside of the area that want to support your campaign. So how would people reach out to find out about this ticket that you and Jillian and Javier have put together? And I'm hoping to have all three of you all on at some point as a, kind of like a three-way call so that we can continue this conversation. But if they're interested in the Charlie Reese campaign, where, where do they need to go? Great. Uh, well, first of all, Mark, thanks for having me tonight. This has been fantastic. Uh, on, the, on the Internet, I'm at charlieforderham.com. It's F-O-R, Charlie, F-O-R, Durham.com. They can also find me on Twitter at, at, Carol, at, sorry, at Charlie Reese. Um, so I'm always on Twitter. <laughs> Oh, no, don't tell me that. That means you're almost as bad as the person that's sitting there in, the, in that office that we don't like to talk about. <laughs> no, no, not like that. I've learned not to take the bait. So. <laughs> I know that's right. Please don't take the bait. <laughs> um, Timothy, if there's any last thoughts that you want to give people, and like I said, I would definitely try to invite you back on an upcoming show, but I did want people to get an idea of what you were all about and everything. But if there's any last thoughts that you have, we would love for you to share them right now. Okay, I would just leave my contact information. Um, my speaking website is timthemotivator.com, so just timthemotivator.com. 
my email, timthemotivator.com, my Youth Entrepreneurship Academy 